one of the most interesting medieval game in a long while has finally received official details on what it's all about and brand new clips as well, including how it is a full on PvE extraction horror game where you can fight different kind of enemies from infected to knights to bandits in a world with different biomes ravaged by a deadly affliction to discovering the game's story by exploring mysterious places and finding out what has happened to this mess of a world. There is a ton of awesome new details that genuinely makes me think what if Un Showdown was a co-op game only and in medieval times. This is what Blight Survival is all about so let's get into the new gameplay details right away and like this video right now if you want more on this game. Okay, so every single new details in this video comes from an interview with the developers on segmentnext.com. Starting off as a simple game made for fun by two friends, this project is now becoming a full-fledged AAA-like experience with a dozen of developers working hard on it right now and adding new gameplay features that were never possible before. The team wants to release Blight on PC and consoles a little bit later on as a fully finished game, not through early access like so many games do. They want to release a full game that is full of features and the intent to share the progress they're making on social medias like right now to be more transparent to everyone. Blight at its core with the new details is round based, meaning that each run as you venture into the map in an attempt to survive as long as possible until you reach a point of no return where you either extract or just die. If you successfully extract, you will get to keep whatever you may have picked up, however, if you die, you will lose your character and your equipment, only to keep some experience experience points here and there that will carry over to your next family who will carry on the legacy of your bloodline. Just like any other roguelite, which Blight Survival is a roguelike game, playability is an important factor and they hope to make every new playthrough different from your last, it is said. Without going into specifics, there will be optional quest type objectives to complete and mysterious places to explore that will give a lot more life to the game and mystery around what is going on here. But given that this is a co-op title, the appreciate that not everyone wants or can pay attention to a story driven narrative. I'm kinda sad that we're just straying away from story driven games, I just love these kind of games but anyway. That means that pretty much all content in the game is optional. It is up to the player to decide where to go and what to do, if they want to experience a story and find secrets or fight as many enemies in as many locations as possible, they can do that. You can go in this world alone or with a friend and online players but every single thing you do will have an impact on what happens next. If you die, it is game over. There is also said to be plenty of player progression to dive into through talents, threats, player attributes, crafting, and then of course gear customization. Currently, they have two crafting systems planned. Weapons and armors, which require an artisan who, for a cost, will provide you with various upgrades and customizations to your gear. To give an example, a sword will consist of a hilt, a crossguard, and a blade and scabbard. Secondly, they have remedies, which range from bandages, torches, to herbs and potions. It is still too early for them to dive into the specifics, but it is safe to say that crafting is a key part of the progression system, they said. At its core though, this game is a classless system, allowing players to mix and match gear and weapons however they see fit, it is said. They want to allow players to play how they fancy without the limits of classes. Players get to decide themselves however they want to engage. With that said, sometimes a more stealthy approach might be safer. However, they're never going to force players to play in a specific way, but rather incentivize them to adapt. To clarify, you can absolutely go in swords blazing throughout the whole game if you so wish, but it'll be very dangerous because some enemies will be very difficult to fight. There will be several religions in the games as well, which you might be able to discover and know about, whereas the playable characters, the written, can make offerings to any of these to receive a random blessing for the duration of the run. There are a lot of different gear slots in games as well and different levels within each. A bassinet, for example, is composed of multiple pieces, a coif, bassinet, and a visor. Then there will be different rarities and conditions for each, which can be upgraded at an artisan in exchange for materials and coin. They finally intend to have matchmaking with dedicated servers, as well as an option to invite your friends. The progression and loot is shared with party members, but you can also venture out alone, but it will be a lot more dangerous for you. But you might discover some things and you'll be able to explore by yourself and do whatever you want. For more on Blight Survival, like the video right now and subscribe to stay tuned.